Hello guys, today we're going to be working on a Samsung Tab Low washer. The model number is on the display. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings. And during this video, you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. The complaint that we have with this washer is that it's off balance, it's shaking and it's banging on the washer cabinet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start um, disassemble the washer and we're going to go ahead and remove the two fillet screws in the front of the top panel now we were here before and we noticed that the washer was banging even with no clothes on there was nothing in there and it was shaking and banging all over the place now the first thing we check it was the uh, drum and tub and those parts look like they were okay so we're going to replace the shocks now we're going to go ahead and, and take apart this um, touch panel display panel and this is kind of difficult design you have to kind of wiggle. you have to open the door kind of wiggle it and it will come right out but sometimes it's not that simple you have to wiggle it for a little while for it to come out like i said samsung i don't know now we're going to go ahead and remove the other two fillet screws in the back these two screws in the front and the two fillet screws in the back is the one that's holding the whole top panel for this washer now once we got the top panel loose we're going to go ahead and put the display back in place and now we have access to the drum and the tub but we find out that it's some wires there they are kind of tight and it's not letting us to open the lid and, or, or this panel all the way up so we're going to go ahead and put some black tape to secure the door that way the door doesn't bounce on us and we're going to go ahead and start looking for a way to get this uh, panel and give us some space to work with now i noticed there is some ground wires and another black wire the ones are kind of tight and the um uh, pressure tube so we're gonna go ahead and try to figure out what we can do to have more access to lift the panel this top panel all the way up that way we have access to the uh, shocks now this is a clamp where it's holding a ground wire i removed that there's that's no big deal if you want to put another strap there it's fine or if you want to leave it alone it's fine as well because i end up uh, disconnecting the wires in another place now we're going to go ahead and remove this you have to do remove these ground wires because like i said those wires are preventing the panel to go where it needs to be to have access um, to the drum in the top. We remove the other ground wire in the other side. And now there's another wire is right there. They are very tight. So I already disconnected as you see right there, but that's gonna be kind of tough to put it back up because like I said, there's no, there's no space there. So I'm gonna have to go to the back panel to put it back, but I already got it. I'm disconnected now the other thing that is holding this top panel is the uh, pressure tube so uh, the pressure tube the water pressure switch is on the bottom of this board so the only thing you have to do is remove these three screws that you see me unscrewing now over here i put a um, flathead screwdriver but it was not necessary you can leave that the way it is i just letting you know you don't have to open the main control board to have act, to have access to this um, water pressure switch now just remove it out of the place because it's secured by two tabs and there is our water pressure switch with the um, water pressure tube now it has like a little clamp grab a needle nose remove the clamp and you will be able to get loose the water pressure hose or water pressure tubing however you want to call it now i believe we're going to be able 
to lift this panel and have access to the shocks. As you see, now I have to, I got everything loose. You see those wires hanging right there. Later on in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the best way to plug it back in because it's not that simple. You have to remove the back panel in the back. Now this is the new parts. This is the new shocks. If you wanna buy these shocks, if you have the same model, there's gonna be a link in the description of this video. So just go there, click it, and you will be able to find this part. There's the part number as well. So you can grab it from there. And again, it's a link in the description of this video. Here's the first shock. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and start in this one, the front right. And I noticed that this shock has some kind of grease, but it's kinda, I don't know, it was very sticky, it's like glue. So I don't know what type of grease is that or lubrication, but it was like a glue. It was too sticky. I have to wash my hands like three times to get it off me. But you know, I I bet you guys seen this thing before. And if you don't, you're already prepared to um, this situation. Remember there's sharp edges on this washer. So try to wear gloves. I know I'm not wearing any. I do this every day. So I'm kind of used to do this, but if you don't do this every day, go ahead and wear some gloves. That's the way you install the shocks. You don't need to get on the bottom of the washer. You just have to lift it, move it out of the way. And then on the bottom, just move it to the side and it will come right out. Very easy, it's not like the Whirlpool that you have to get underneath the washer to be able to remove them. That was kind of cool. Again, as you see, cleaning my hands is because it was very sticky and it was bothering me a lot. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the one on the front left. And again, it's very self-explanatory. The same way you see it goes on the top, the same way it goes on the bottom. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the back left and we're gonna go ahead and leave the, uh, the back right for last because that's a little more complicated. I'm gonna go ahead and show you for me, it was not necessary, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and show you if you have trouble trying to grab that um, shock. Just grab some uh, vice grips, and as you can see, I'm using the vice grip to move it out of the way. It's that simple, that's how you're removing. Really, this job took a little while because this is the first time that I'm dealing with this um, cabinet on the Samsung. I have done a lot of Samsung shocks, but this design is kind of new. The reason why this shock goes bad is because people overload this machine. In this scenario, this machine is in a spot. So this is a commercial place and they use it every day with heavy towels. Now we're done with that one and we're gonna go ahead and do the last one, which is the one on the back right. And that one has a clamp uh, with some um, wires and the uh, pressure tubing goes around that. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a better, um, a better footage later on in this video, so stay tuned. As you see, I'm on twisting it to be able to get it out because they put the uh, pressure tubing around the shock and that's why I leave this one for last. If you have any issues, don't worry about putting it in, um, around um, the shock. Just put the clip that I'm gonna show you in a little bit in, in, in a picture. Now I'm grabbing the last shock and like i said you can get this uh, uh the link of the description of this video you can get it on repair clinic amazon and ebay
I'm gonna go ahead and leave all the footage that way you guys can see that I was a little struggling and I cut some of the footage that way the video is not boring but like I said if you have trouble um, doing it this way uh, I'm gonna remove the panel in the back and I'm gonna show you where you can have access and uh, you can see better of what you're doing when you remove the back panel in a little bit as you see I put it exactly like the other one was it's just that the camera didn't catch that because it, you know, I got very limited space but I put the clamp as long as you got that clamp in place you're good now we just put everything back in the old box just to move everything out of the way now in this footage i'm trying to connect those wires but like i said it was too tight it was no way to do it that way and i don't want to risk uh, to break any wires or any harnesses so i went to the back and i removed the back panel there's four screws and when you remove the four screws just lift it up pull out and it will come right out and as you can see right there there's the two wires that i was able to disconnect but it was hard to uh, connect it back in place and i just removed the panel to make my life easier and there we go it's best to do it this way because you don't want to break any wiring and create another issue and this is the other footage that i was telling you about you can have access and try to put this chuck if you have trouble doing it from the top Once you got everything connected and make sure everything is right, just put the panel back up and go ahead and put the two slacks in the top first and then the two in the bottom just slides back in place. Now go ahead and install the four screws that you already uh, that you removed earlier to secure the back panel. Once you do that, go ahead and uh, secure the ground wires that you, re that you removed earlier to have access to the top panel. There's another ground wire in the other side if you didn't um, notice earlier in the other footage. There we go. And right now we're going to go ahead and um, connect everything else. Those are the slacks that are kind of hard to get off. Just trying to show you right there in that footage and you have to be careful with those because sometimes they break and if they break just try to put it back the way it was it should not pop out or anything now here is the tubing remember we have a clamp try to grab like a needle nose pliers okay. and make sure the clamp it doesn't slide all the way down because this one it was trying to go all the way down in the hole but I was able to grab it, go ahead and put the tubing where it goes on the pressure switch and secure the tubing with the clamp. As you see, I'm grabbing the uh, clamp with the needle nose pliers to secure the tubing in place. Once you do that, just make sure everything is the way it was mm -hmm. and go ahead and put the panel where it was, which is secured by three screws. You have to remove this board to have access to the pressure switch. Once you do that, go ahead and put the two filler screws that are secured in the top panel, the two filler screws in the back once you do that one yes go ahead and put this uh, touch panel or um, display panel back in place just put it in angle up and then secure it back where it goes sometimes you have to open the door that way it goes in easier 
go ahead and put back the two Phillips screws that are secure in the back of this um, touch panel. At this point, we almost done. We just gotta verify that everything is working fine. Go ahead and plug the washer and remove all your tools out of the way. The last thing we're gonna do is install the two Phillips screws in the front. And put the covers back in place. Now go ahead and put the washer in place where it was or however the customer wanted and go ahead and start doing some testing. Again this washer was banging all over the place when we got here. This washer is used as a commercial washer because this is a spot in the wash towels heavy towels every day people don't realize that these machines are made to work as a um, you know for household and you can see the big top right there but that doesn't mean you can overload it you're not supposed to overload the washer but the people when they don't see the um, metal agitator they think that you can put many clothes it fits in there and not, that's not the way it is you have to read the paperwork that way you can use the machine um, the right way now right now we're gonna go ahead and put a, a spin yeah spin and rinse or a spin only now this is a tip once you got a washer in this on dial three that's when it reached the higher rpm that's when it goes really fast and that's how you know if you did a good job right now everything is good thanks for watching